Several high school basketball games were postponed because of the frigid temperatures. Only a few were played. The Springfield boys team beat Mineral Ridge for their sixth win of the season. A balanced attack by the Tigers with four players in double figures. And congratulations to the Lady Buckeyes as they clinched the Big Ten title outright with their win yesterday. And a rivalry was renewed yesterday as Ohio State took on that team up north. Let's take a look at the highlights and see who got the W. Last night, the Spurs traveled to the land and seemed to have no trouble against the Cavs. LeBron was one assist shy of a triple-double with 33 points, 13 rebounds, and 9 assists. Let's check out those highlights. And the Cavs got to stay at home this past weekend, and they lost again. Let's roll the highlights. Thank you, Katie and Adam. I'm standing here in the really loud Max Center. Now tonight, Kent State looks for their journey on the tourney, but to get to that point, they have to get past this first game against Northern Illinois. Tonight, we have a renewed rivalry between this year's big studs in the Metro. Both Woodridge and Coventry are coming in at 6-1, and one, and with the Metro title on the line, this game couldn't be more important. Trying to make the playoffs and uh, being the PTC champs has been the goal. Uh, it's been the goal five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. Last year, this year. I mean, there's still you know two games to finish after this week, but obviously with us being the two front runners in it, it, it certainly gives the, the winner you know the heads up in it. Woodridge's quarterback Mason Lydic has barely been touched this year by opposing teams' defenses, but Coventry's defense has only allowed a little over 11 points per game, and again they plan on relying on that defensive power. Our defense brings a lot of pressure, um, force a lot of turnovers. And uh, we like to set up our offense with a great field position. Clearly, uh, you know, force, force things to happen. You know, force some interception. Woodridge knows about Coventry's defense, and their answer to that can be summed up in one word, discipline. We have to be very disciplined. Uh, I, I believe a lot of teams have come out against Coventry and not been the most disciplined. Take the weaknesses that they create through that aggressive play and, you know, take advantage of them. Just to do what we do, or do what we do best. Play uh, offense, defense, and special teams, and the win should come. A lot is on the line tonight, and the players and the coaches are well aware of this. We're right there. Uh, we're knocking on the door, um, you know, God willing, we're willing to uh, kick the door down and, and get after it. It's a big game. It's a playoff game. It's senior night, and it's PTC championship. In Peninsula, reporting for TV2, I'm Jacob Thompson. Several high school basketball games were postponed because of the frigid temperatures. Only a few were played. The Springfield boys team beat Mineral Ridge for their sixth win of the season. A balanced attack by the Tigers with four players in double figures. Let's check out these highlights. So we're going to start off in the first quarter. Shane Enon, he get the rebound and the putback and the and one. He had 27 points on the night. Later on, Jordan Zupo, he'd have 28 points, including that three right there. And then you see Zupo here, he'll get the fast break layup, and that would tie the game at 10-10. But Drew Clark for Springfield would make sure that the Tigers would regain the lead. They would be up 13-10 at this point. And the fans are loving it. We have Evan Olon to John Ritter, and Ritter would get the layup. He'd have 10 points on the night. And then Zupo again, he'd get a layup here, and then Springfield would only lead at this point 15-12. But the Tigers would end up starting to pull away. Clark right here, he'll get the putback, and Springfield would win 76 to 56. And now we got Boardman at Howland. Spartans up by four at this point. Frank Rapich would hit the three, cutting the lead for Boardman just by one. Later on in the game, Tigers down by two. Frankie Munoz, he have 14 points, including that three, and Tigers would lead by one. Ryan Arkey, you get a layup, and, Sp and the Spartans would regain the lead only by one. But Howland's Jonah Wiseman would get the jumper here, and Howland would have the lead by one. Third quarter, we got the Spartans up by one. Mike Musowski would get a layup here, and Boardman would lead 42 to 39. Jumping in the fourth quarter, Howland up by one. Connor Tamarkin, he'd have 14 points on the night. And then later on, Trey Tavana, he'd get a layup and tie the game at 55, but Howland would start to pull away at the end. Tamarkin getting get in the layup here. Howland would win 71 to 63. And the Youngstown State basketball teams have another doubleheader tomorrow. The women wrap up their sixth game homestead against IUPUI, the only undefeated team in the Horizon League. They tip off at 415. 
while the men are looking for their third, third straight conference win taking on Green Bay. Meanwhile, in a couple weeks, the YSU men's basketball program is having a reunion with former players and coaches. They'll have a dinner on Friday the 19th. The next day, they'll attend the team's shoot-around and be introduced to their game against IUPUI. I think it's all about um, these players having a great experience. And not only, you know, when they leave, uh, we want them to come back and be very, very proud. And that's really a big reason why we played a lot of the non-conference games. I didn't think we had enough tradition uh, in history up on the walls of, of our building. You know, we need pictures of former players, former coaches. And Warren Harding graduate James Daniels is foregoing his senior year at Iowa University and entering the NFL draft. This was Daniels three years ago making a verbal commitment to Iowa. He made an immediate impact playing in 14 games his freshman campaign, 12 as a sophomore, and 11 last season. Daniels is considered one of the best centers prospects and some mock drafts having him being selected in the second round. And now we got some Penguins highlights here. Daniel Sprung, he'll go on the 2-1-1 breakaway and he'd get the goal. Penguins would lead early in the second period, 1-0. Sticking in the second, power play for Pittsburgh. Gino Malkin will get the goal there, 2-0 Penguins at this point. Staying in the same period, Sidney Crosby, he would get the slap shot goal in there and three goals all in the second period for the Penguins. We'll now go into the third period, and it's Sprung again. He'd get his second goal of the night, and the Penguins would go on to beat the Islanders 4-0. And that's a wrap in sports. Derek and Leslie? Going into the second, LeBron James showing you why he's one of the best with that layup there. He would get the free throw on that Cavs lead by four. Later on, LaMarcus Aldridge hits a jump shot right over Tristan Thompson. San Antonio leads by one. Going into the third, LeBron gets another layup there. San Antonio leads by four. Half. Marquise Reed gets a huge three right there and Syracuse leads by three. Later on, we got Elijah Thomas again, gets a put back. And the game would be tied at 43 at this point. Later on in the second half, Bates Diop hits a big three and Ohio State would pull, pull into within four.